דיינים נכבדים, רבנים נכבדים, Mr. Steve Pack, President of the United Synagogue, Henry Officers of Finchley Synagogue, and may I add that we are expecting the arrival of the Ambassador of Israel during the course of the evening, Morai Verabotai. I would like to thank you for joining us this evening to pay tribute Le'ilui Nishmat HaKadoshim Vahatahorim, the three Israeli teenagers murdered in cold blood. And together with Kol Beit Israel the world over, we are united in expressing our grief at this time. And we come together this evening to study Torah Le'ilui Nishmatan. In the opening presentation that I shall now give, I have chosen as my theme the subject of Kiddush Hashem. And let me commence with the following question. When we recite a bracha over a mitzvah, there are two different nuschaot. Sometimes we say, Asher Kiddush Hashem, Al, and then we mention the precept. Sometimes it's Asher Kiddush Hashem, Le, and then we mention the mitzvah we're about to perform. So how do we differentiate between the Al and the Le? When do we say Al? When do we say Le? And to help us understand the context, let's have a look at a Brit Milah. The Mohel says a bracha. He represents the father of the baby. Al mitzvat milah. Al. And then literally a few seconds later, the father of the baby says, It is leh. So why is the Mohel's bracha al, and the father of the baby's bracha leh, when they're taking place at one and the same time, relating to the identical mitzvah? The conventional way of explaining this is as follows. There are some mitzvot which we perform, and once the act is over, we know that the mitzvah is behind us and we get on with the rest of our day. So, for example, take uh, the mitzvah of biur chametz. Once I have burnt the chametz, destroyed the chametz, I can now get on with the other activities of Erev Pesach. The al is the bracha that I recite with regard to a mitzvah which I perform and which is now behind me. It's over. And I can now look forward to doing other things and my day will be enhanced through having performed that mitzvah which is now behind me. Al mikra Megillah. I've read the Megillah on Puri morning. I can get on with the mitzvot for the rest of the day. I've no, I know I've done my deed. It is behind me. Le, however, is a bracha which is recited over a process. And the le sets that process in motion. La asok b'divrei Torah. You cannot say, I've studied one pasuk of Torah, and now the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is behind me. There's no end to Talmud Torah. Vahagita bo yomam valayla. We meditate in words of Torah day and night. Therefore, it is la'azok b'tivrei Torah. Lishma'a kol shofar. We recite that bracha in our shuls round about 10 o'clock, 10.15 a.m. Rosh Hashanah morning. And the concluding tikkiah could be 1 o'clock, half past 1, 2 o'clock, 3 to 4 hours later. The bracha sets in motion a process that commences. Therefore, it is le. Now we can understand what happens at a Brit Milah. With regard to the Brit itself, the circumcision, thank God, once it's over, it's over. And it brings relief to one and all. And therefore the bracha of the Mohel on behalf of the Father is al Hamila. It's happened. It's behind us. However, when it comes to Jewish education, when it comes to bringing our children into the covenant of Abraham our father, when it comes to strengthening Jewish identity, it's at the Brit Milah 
that the parents start a process which will then continue throughout the child's life. And therefore the bracha is lehach niso bivrito shel Avraham Avinu. A different answer was given to our question in Kovna in 1941. If you have visited Kovna in Lithuania or if you are planning a visit, you will include the ninth fort in the significant places that you will be seeing. And you will go to this fort on the outskirts of the city and there you will stand in the place where tens of thousands of Jews were positioned in front of a firing squad when their lives were extinguished. And one of the survivors of the Ninth Fort, after the war, related the following incident. There was a group of Jewish people who were just about to be shot. One of them noticed that a rav, a rabbi, was in their midst. He went over to the rabbi and he said, I've got a shaila for you. What's the shaila? He said, just before I'm going to be shot, I'd like to recite a bracha over the mitzvah of dying al Kiddush Hashem. What should the nusach be of the bracha? Should it be asher Kiddush Hashem of a al Kiddush Hashem or lekadesh et Hashem? Is it al or lo? And the recorded answer of the Rav then was as follows. He said, when you recite a bracha and it is al, that is something I have to do for myself. When it is le, a shaliach can do it for me. Al achilat chametz. At the Seder, I have to eat chametz. There is no concept of a shaliach who will eat the chametz on my behalf. Uh, not chametz, shalom. <laughs> Matzah. So I cannot have a shaliach to eat matzah on my behalf. Al netilat yadayim. I can't stay in the dining room and send somebody on my behalf to go and wash hands for me and then to come back to the table and to motion it's done as if my hands have been... No, it's al. Once it is al, I have to do it for myself. Al svirata omer. I must count the omer for myself. Le, however, is something that somebody can do on my behalf. Lishmoa kol shofar. It's le, because somebody can blow the shofar for me. Therefore, said the Rav, when it comes to dying al kiddush Hashem, nobody can do this mitzvah for you. Only you can perform this mitzvah. Therefore, the right nusach is al kiddush Hashem. I think it's mind-blowing just to consider that that Shiloh was asked in the midst of a context in which lives were being taken only because we were Jewish. No differentiation between men, women, children. And somebody was able to raise his personal dignity to enhance his Kiddushah and those around him to find out what is the right Nusach to chant for dying al Kiddush Hashem. And it is told that once he received the answer, he spread the message amongst others and said, just before you're shot, this is the bracha that you will say. Tonight, with much sadness, together with the entire Jewish people, we remember three wonderful teenagers who were murdered al Kiddush Hashem. And the question I want to pose to us tonight is, it's now exactly three weeks since they disappeared. Should we allow this three-week period that is behind us to be something which has happened, we can put it behind us and now get on with other things? Or should we see it as the beginning of a process? And I believe that our inspiration for an answer comes from Parshat Balak, which we will be reading on Shabbat. My son Dani told me on the phone this morning, he teaches in the Gush, and yesterday he said to his Talmidim, I want to set a challenge to you. What connections can you find between Parshat Balak and what has just happened? And this is the answer that one of his Talmidim gave. He said as follows, 
For him, the most significant pasuk is the concluding pasuk of the passage relating to the prophecy of Bilam. How does that pasuk go? Vayakom Bilam, Vayelech, Vayashov Limkomo, Vigam Balach Alach Ledarko. And Bilam got up, and he went, and he returned to his place. Just consider what had happened to Bilam. HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'chvodova Atzmoh had spoken to him. An angel of God had stood in front of him. An animal had had a conversation with him. He had sought to curse our people, and he had been moved by what he saw to bless our people with words which were jewels, which continue to guide and inspire the world to this very day. And after all those experiences, you would expect a paradigm shift that Bilam would have said, until now I have thought such and such about the Jewish people. Now it's all different. Until now I'd allowed myself to do various things. Now I know to follow God at all times. No, nothing of the sort. Vayakon Bilam, Vayelech, Vayashov Limkomo. He went back to the place where he had started. Water off a duck's back. Nothing had moved him. And perhaps that's why it is a parshas tuma. There are no breaks, no openings. Because Bilam didn't contemplate at all. No pause for thought at any moment. It just all happened without influencing him at all. And I believe that we should not allow that to happen to us and to Klal Yisrael at this time. During the past three weeks, we have seen Umikam Chai Yisrael Goyechad Baaretz who is like the people of Israel, a very special nation on earth. We've seen the Achdut of Am Yisrael. And on behalf of us all, I would like to welcome Maran Harishon Letzion, Harav Bakshi Doron, who is gracing this evening's event with his presence. Would Harishon Letzion please come and sit at the top? The Rishon Letzion is uh, in London at this time. He heard about our event and he said he must come and be part of the event so that he can identify with the words of Torah. Please. Please, Bavak Hashem. We cannot allow the past three weeks to be behind us in a way through which we will now just move on forward ahead as if it didn't transpire. Let us nurture that sense of achdut. Let us preserve the unity in our people to guarantee that we maintain shalom bayit within our own national midst throughout all time in the future. During the past three weeks, we have been enormously inspired through the dignity and the Yirat Shamaim of the families, of the teachers, of the friends, of those who were murdered. Let us take their messages and their example to heart, to ennoble our lives and to enhance our existences for the future. And in contemplating on the dignity of our people during the past three weeks, let us send out a very strong message to every single Jewish person around the world. Please don't blot our collective copybook. Please don't lead us into a situation of shame through of your own back, engaging in any action which will bring disgrace to our nation. The Israeli government will need to do what the Israeli government needs to do in order to preserve lives of her citizens, and to guarantee the security of the nation. But let no individual cause shame to our people at this time. And finally, as we reflect on the way in which the lives of Talmidei Yeshiva were extinguished, let us be all the more devoted to Talmud Torah, to study Torah, to compensate for the absence of the Torah that they will now not be able to study, to commit ourselves to enriching our lives through an appreciation of our tradition and of our roots, in order that, as a result of what we have just experienced, 
May we emerge in the course of time to a period of peace, of harmony, of security for one and all in the region. And may we ourselves personally and as a community be ennobled through what we have seen and experienced during the weeks that have preceded us.